It's April the 2nd, 2022, and you are listening to The Future of Photography. The Future of Photography. And here we are again. And we, that's Jeremiah and myself. Hi. Hi. How's it going? <laughs> okay. Wow, Adrian, two bubbles. Miss, two missing, bubbles missing still. He, yeah. He's missing in action. He's taking pictures, drinking beer, and doing whatever he does. I think he's been on a photo walk today. So In Amsterdam? Is that Amsterdam? No, 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 no. I think in London. I think in London. Oh. Uh, this whole Amsterdam thing. We'll talk about this another time. Um, Let's see. We have a fun topic. I believe a fun topic for us. And... Okay, so let me let me kick this off with um, with the Amen break. Of all things, you have you heard of the Amen break? So here's here it is. The Amen break is a piece of music that was uh, is a drum break that comes from a song by the Amen Brothers and uh, no by the, by the song Amen Brother by the Winstons from 1969. It's a drum break, and if you hear this, uh, let me play this for you. This is a very, it might remind Commonly people of something, used. because it has been so overused, it pretty much became the default um, hip-hop drum loop for the 80s. The whole hip-hop scene is based on the aim and break, <laughs> and I'm not even exaggerating here. Just a few examples, and, and way beyond that, just a few examples. I have brought some music here, listen to this. There's your aim and break. Or listen to this one. There's your aim and break. Or listen to this one. There it is again. Or listen to this one. I could go on. So they they slice and dice this thing, and it has become a de facto standard drum loop that is everywhere. Isn't that sort wild? of like an audio Willem scream, a musical Willem scream. Which is the next bit that I've uh, <laughs> prepared here, because everyone has probably heard this one. There's your Wilhelm scream, which you, as a as a director, are, are uh, no doubt very aware of. And yes, uh, I'll tell you a tale of the Willem scream. Go, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, uh, um, it's a very, very... Uh, one could almost say overused to the point of being fabulously used. Um, it, it's a it, meme. It's it has a, turned into a meme pretty much, right? It has. Um, about seven or eight years ago, I was directing producer of a show. And we we just, because the showrunner, writer, and I uh, just shared the same kind of quirky sense of humor, we decided we will put in a Willem screen in every single episode that we do. Somewhere buried is a Willem screen. So you, you used it as an Easter egg, pretty much. It, not even pretty much. We did. And yeah. uh, just, just buried it in. You have to really... Oh, there it is. There it is. So um, it, it, you, know, you find it in... I mean, if one would uh, YouTube search Willem scream... Oh, yeah. It'd be it's, thousands... It's of movies, not hundreds, thousands. Oh, and and, and 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 all the big ones. I mean, we're talking Star Wars, 1977. Oh, yeah. We're talking Lord of the Rings with The Hobbit. Every, it's everywhere. This, this, this sound is... Had, and and it's, it's, this history is interesting because it's from 1953 and it was after, I think it was a scene where, uh, where uh, the pr private Wilhelm that's the guy in the movie who got an arrow in his leg or something, and that's the that's the that's the cry, and this one ended up in the Warner Brothers stock sound library, and then everyone it used turned. it, but then it yeah as you said it turned into this Easter egg meme kind of thing, and um, what would the world be without the Wilhelm scream? Now and Chris, what sure. are people thinking? Does this have to do? With photography and in well, fact the future of photography. Let me let me bring this into the onto the visual side because that's where I think it um, it becomes interesting. Of course, stock photography. We want to talk about stock photography because stock is everywhere. But I have another visual example that um, is more from the future of photography and the future of filmmaking. Um, the 
there are well nowadays and you know this uh, often you you work with special effects to add in additional characters into a scene there's a virtual it's just a guy in the background and you don't have the the footage of that and then you end up uh, having someone create that character which is quite easy to do and in a convincing fashion these days so but one of the th one of the things you have to do is you have to animate these characters and there are several ways to do that you could You could have someone manually animate this with keyframes, which typically ends up not looking very convincing. You could put someone in a mocap suit, but that's expensive and time-consuming. Or you could go to a stock library of motions. And there is a stock library. There's several uh, stock libraries. The one that I recently came across um, was uh, called Mixamo. And Mixamo is like, you get you get what they call walk cycles. So an animation of someone walking. And Jeremiah, you might be aware that a walk is a very unique thing to a person. You, couldn't, you, can, fact, reco you can recognize a person on, at their walk. In fact, uh, many actors that I have worked with over the years build their characters from yeah. their walk. And they yeah. do that even uh, more um, adroitly by, by maybe asking the wardrobe department to give them shoes that are one half size too small or one half size too big <laughs> and uh, maybe a little pointy toe, whatever that is, starting there. And when they put that on and start to move, it helps the body recognize a differential. And right. that helps them. So they build it from the mind down and the shoe up and... Uh, it's a fascinating kind of uh, method of inhabiting or remembering, remembering uh, characters, you know, when you're on a shoot that is months and months and months all out of sequence. Right. Just kind of whether you're tired, energized, hungover, uh, loaded for bear, whatever you're doing to try and wake up every morning, get to the set and immediately. And be in that same state that again. Yes. Yes, so often yeah. the sense memory, which is the walk, how does that character walk? Are they slumped over? Are they carrying right. themselves upright? Is it long strides, short strides, shuffle strides? How uh, do, do they how do they hold their arms? How do they move their arms when they're on that kind of stuff? So all that. So what triggered my idea for this episode was a tweet that said the Mixamo walk cycle is the new Wilhelm scream. Because <laughs> it turns out that that uh, that the default walk cycle um, that you can get from their website and then just just uh, plug your animation your character into pretty much um, that that is beginning to be overused in some areas. So um, there was one example where someone where they, where they showed a, a video snippet of Dune the movie and a guy walks through the background and that is exactly <laughs> the mix of a walk cycle, <laughs> which is a freebie <laughs> on their website. So. Um, I find this really, really interesting. So I wanted just to briefly look into the whole stock thing with you. And of course, walk cycles, motions. Um, what other things are there? What, what kind of stock do you use in film production when you need to, when you can't create something from scratch? It's a, it, it's a great question. And, and certainly we've evolved <clears throat> way beyond what traditional stock has been over the last two decades. I mean, it's right. gotten really, really good, especially with the um, kind of explosion of digital cameras and um, the, the kind of uh, camera AI presenting accurately or beautifully photographed, rendered um, photographs, and of course, applying whatever look you need to. So the off the shelf is there. Of course, it's always about um, the subjects. And I, I think a very good example, which I'm sure everyone is, is aware of who is watching this channel on YouTube, so many um, videos on YouTube are using uh, especially sort of financial advice. It's all the tickers and people the, with their the pencil usual and suspects taking off in their terms glasses. of stock photography. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And they're commonly used and overused and overused and overused. And I I um I personally am waiting for a great uh filmmaker to make uh the 
Koyaanisqatsi movie out of stock <laughs> You know, huh? you know, I, I've I've looked at at what are the cliches of stock photography, and I found a website that lists like the, the ten stock photo cliches. Um, and uh, they include things like the target, where is your dartboard with a with a dart in the middle, um, the cupped hands holding something like a little tree growing out of them, the Superman, which is a guy ripping his shirt open. Um, that, of course, don't forget about the business handshake. That's the taking think, off of the glasses is a big the one. The taking off of the or the or the cl what they call the clinically antiseptic and overly attractive customer service team. Um, <laughs> it's there, just there's all that but but we laugh at that but just the last few weeks um because i've been editing uh my series and and you know we're matching a, a specific uh city in uh in ohio and we shot it in you know another city in canada um, for the most part, it's all interiors and kind of tight street scenes and whatnot. But occasionally, we need a cityscape for transitions. Right. Um, and so we need something very obscure. It's not like if you go and you, you look for New York skyline, L.A. skyline, Chicago skyline, or, or um, you know, even uh, a kind of cinematic, uh, you know, sundown to sunrise motion, you know, that you can accelerate. But try and find one for Akron, Ohio. <laughs> not, oh, not okay. So easy. And you cannot use something that is Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, or just to have to be the Spokane. right thing. Well, because the people in Spokane are going, to, you know, that's not our city. And so, doing a deep dive, and I don't include myself in that deep dive. I assign that to our wonderful uh, editorial assistants, the assistant editors, and I, I gave them, you know, maybe. Um, half a dozen or a dozen different stock uh, arenas who do specialize in 4K because it has to match. Um, and we're shooting in two to one aspect ratio. So it has to be not as good as a square image may be. Right. It has to be cinematically and adjusted to that. Um, and it has to have the same uh, bones that allow me color correct uh, to, on the online, pull out change contrast, sky replacement, and all of that. And after uh, two or three days, we found some beautiful, beautiful imagery of same and uh, sped up the, the kind of sunset in that case. Uh, so it just shows the passage of time and gave it a little boost in After Effects just on the offline editing. And it works great. I mean, it but works beautifully. Was that, that was just a photo, 2D photo? That no, you, no, or, it, was, it, was, it was film. It was, it was, it was film. film. Okay. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. Yeah, it was a you know a, maybe a uh, five second clip of which. So you know, I used I'm just wondering if if you couldn't find that, would 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 a special effects company take a photo and then 3D model that and and put the textures on and just rebuild that in 3D? Is that something that's being no, done? No. What I think what I would have done is maybe a series of of stills. Uh, that I would use a dissolve in oh, and maybe I see, I replace see. the sky. And I mean, there's a lot you can do in a quick establishing true, uh, yeah. transitional shot uh, because you're not really looking. Obviously, it has to adhere to a, an aesthetic, you know, and and uh, so much of stock <laughs> are, are taken by people with zero aesthetic. <laughs> they just like shoot wildly. And I, I often wonder, and this is a great business for someone who has 10 years to spare to build it. <laughs> but uh, there, there's a company, um, I think they're based uh, in, in Asia called Fiverr. Are you familiar? Oh, yeah. With oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. But if, if you could imagine a Fiverr for photography. So, so that's, that's, would, that's, that's, that's where, you, where you hire people, little freelance jobs, this kind of stuff, yeah. Exactly, and people bid on it, and, and you could put your kind of photography on them, and a client would go and say, right. I need a shot or a, a clip of you know a street corner at sundown that has glowing buildings, and you look at who hashtags that. And and you uh, go. I have you know two three hundred bucks for it or a thousand. You know you know what you know where we are going with this. But you will feed an AI with that prompt, and you will get your photo from the AI. Oh, do I hope that generative? You get, uh, the f yeah, I think I think you're as you know. I 
completely we're going there. We were that, going right? there. So you can you can already. I think I think um, Nvidia already has an engine where you can describe photos and landscape photos. It works well. I don't think it's very specific in terms of it has to be such and such from Pittsburgh. Um, but we are slowly slowly getting there. Yeah, and then you add a couple of meta humans in the background with a walk of your description with, with the with the Mixamo walk cycle, and that's it. And you have a crowded sidewalk <laughs> moving through an artificial landscape and light it properly, and you're all there. Uh, and this is where we're going. So, what are your favorite? Just just as a closing question, what are your favorite cliches in terms of film stock? Uh, Usage. What is the oh, I, what is the equivalent uh, in your world? What is the equivalent to the business handshake photo? I would say the overhead shot of tall buildings moving through a city. Oh, you if mean I you mean look, where you fly from a helicopter or the up and you're looking, looking? You're looking. Yeah, it's probably a drone shot now. You're looking straight down. Using, yes, straight down at buildings <laughs> overlooking. That I mean, <laughs> that's got to be my number one. Like, oh God. And often they're beautiful shots. I mean, they, they oh. are. And so I'm not even describing that as kind of badly photographed or, no, you know, this. kind of a cliche of subject. But it is a style overused uh, nowadays. Um, and with drones now, everybody is flying, you know. You know f following they're easy to come by, these kind of shots. They're super easy to come by, yeah. They are, yeah. So, I mean, that would be one. Um, I think uh, the other thing that I see is um, uh, a horn-rimmed glasses-wearing man uh, holding a pen, looking at a computer screen, and the ticker tape reflected in his glasses. That, that I seem to see everywhere it, as being some kind of expert on I think for me I, I think for me it's the it's the hacker with the screen the, in a dark room with the screen projecting onto their face and like the you hoodie see, and the hoodie of course and the hoodie, the hoodie yeah, of course anyway so the, if I think the future of photography is stock based on a verbal description and you get exactly I, what you can want. Can I throw out something for our Discord? Uh, um, of course. Anybody listening who is kind of tickled by this, screen capture or find your favorite um, meme-like, overused, exaggerated stock image. Or create one. Just, or create one. Or create one. Even better. And, and stick it on our Discord and we'll give you a shout out. I and really and uh, and the the business handshake is forbidden. Not the business handshake. <laughs> there are others there. <laughs> so yeah, that's fun. Uh, you know, creating stock photography, which is a a gig that that is, it's an amazing I, I, exercise. You know, you learn a lot. It really, yeah. I mean, I I believe I don't know, but I believe that there are people who really do make their living still creating today. Yes, stock, yes, yes, yes. Stock yes, yes. Photographs and licensing them generally or broadly. I um, um, I talked with a with a professional stock photographer, and that was his only gig. That was his business, and um, he would he would travel to somewhere up in the Arctic in the middle of summer to take the Christmas pictures that he would then sell six months later. So, mm. or no, no, not six months later, two months later, because everyone else needed yeah. three or four months to do their Christmas calendars and their Christmas brochures and their Christmas uh, Christmas advertising campaigns and stuff. So he always has to be about a half a year ahead of the competition and that's what he's doing. So, yeah. Um, yeah, there we go. But I mean, yeah, just shooting kind of groups of people having a good time, you know, laughing and of course you can you always know, use camaraderie these camaraderie and, yeah. and 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 so of course you know you, you I guess these people have a, a small production team to handle the signatures of, of right. the of the kind of subjects to make sure that they have bought in. And often, I'm sure they're paid as some kind of stipend. Sure. Um, and and. You know, creating that as a business just to do stock photos, and I, I again, I, I think I've seen some interesting stock agencies evolving that are counterintuitive to the meme world that right. that are trying to go for unusual faces, highly composed, beautifully lit, and just nice images 
that are there. Um, and one sees those used in not only print advertising, but television advertising as well. Given the cost of production rises, of course, that puts professionals in the toilet. But um, well, that's, that's, know, that's, that's the, demo, that's, the dem de democracy uh, at work, right? That's right. I mean, what are you going to do? You know, yeah. so um, I, I do think that uh, creating that with AI will then be an entirely different business. So then oh, you'll yeah. have coders and programmers uh, that are leading the charge in image making, and that will be an evolution or devolution, depending on your point of view, um, in, in terms of what will be available. Um, but I still think, yeah, the Koyaniskwazi of, of, of stock photography remains un, unmade yet. And, that would be uh, a challenge that would be thrown wonderful. out to the world. <laughs> be funny. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, one could then apply the same to the music, <laughs> but maybe it's putting a hat on a hat. Maybe you want very, very serious music accompanying it. I don't know. There you go. Um, let's move on to the picks of the week. Um, I, I'm sure. picking. I'm picking the website that I talked about earlier, and that is this. Uh, 10 stock photo cliches that are decimating your credibility. So <laughs> that one includes the the target, of course. That one includes the cupped hands, as I nice. mentioned. The Superman, of course. The nice. guy in the suit ripping off his shirt. Um, the rainbow, I haven't seen that too often, but um, the close-up of an eye is, of yeah. course. Yeah, you see a lot of things reflected in the eye. Yeah, Right. The handshake does have to of be course. in there. It's we have important. a deal. The overly staged meeting there with you happy go. people in a business context and uh, the, at a Dutch angle, which gives it more dynamic feeling. So that is important. There's the pen. Course. There's the pen. The pen and the, and the notepad. There's, there's it's still the pen and the notepad and rarely uh, uh, like an iPad or something like that. I think um, these really demand a kind of, uh, of, of caption, which is, um, you know, here's two people that are about yeah. to foreclose on a house. And look how <laughs> Something happy like they that. Are. <laughs> here's uh, someone writing on a board. Um, of it course, must the huddle. Smart. The huddle is important. People huddling teamwork. over the camera. Teamwork, teamwork. Yeah. And then, last but not least, the clinically antiseptic and overly attractive customer service team sitting know, in a it's, white it's room, so smiling Very at the clean. screen. Everyone looking their best and uh, typing away with uh, pointy fingers on their keyboards while looking Sweat into empty Sweat and chewing screens. gum. Sweat and chewing gum will be a cause for There you uh, go. The future okay. of elimination. My, 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 <laughs> yeah, the, the setup, I, I changed the, sorry, but I changed the setup to avoid this in the future, but I'm not quite there yet. <laughs> We're not in the future yet. We're still in the present, so. Yeah, yeah. that's where we are. Um, yeah, the, the, your pick. Uh, my pick is is uh, certainly on a completely different uh, world here. Hold on, let me. You have it up there. Here we go. Yeah, Sabine yeah. Pigal. Uh, worth exploring if you um, explore this this woman's uh, photography. It is. <laughs> what can I say? Oh wow! So is that photography? Is that something Both. else? It, it's a Cause... blend of photography, painting, Photoshop. Um, illustration are, oh yeah my God, that dazzling. stuff is good that stuff dazzling is good. dazzling and also I also like it looks like mixing around and mix and matching heads onto other bodies and that kind of absolutely uh, this is <laughs> look at this, this is of this course is i'm attracted to work like this um i i find it uh just beautiful because it's amusing it's highly technical uh, stylistically it's something we've never seen before it if it, it's a throwback to classical painting uh the absurdity of court painting in many ways uh fashion um oh, I and, dig it. And, <laughs> and so i i love to use my picks to to present artists who may not have kind of reached the kind of overall threshold of fame but what can you say about that? You've done that a mighty good a... job at that, yes. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> this is oh, a water cooler holding your mind. Uh, yeah, um, there's a lot here, and uh, uh, I, uh, I applaud Sabine wherever she may be. It is wonderful. Someone's demolishing your house behind you. That's what it sounds like. Is that me? No. <laughs> 
<laughs> something's going on. Doesn't matter. <laughs> something's though. going on. Something's, something's going, going on. on. Uh, there's something going here as well. We are uh, at the end of our episode, and <laughs> some uh, jet is taking off in the alley. Something weird is going on. But anyway, um, we are. Of course, online. Adrian will be back soon, and uh, you can follow us uh, on online TFOP now. You can find us at thefutureofphotography.com, and in general um, on our Discord, of course, which is um, all linked in the show notes. And wow, <laughs> wow! Formula, Formula One outside. I don't. Know. I'm looking forward to more electric cars, and um, we'll be back soon until then everyone um, have a great weekend if you still have your weekend and we'll be back soon take care bye you've been listening to the future of photography subscribe to the show wherever you get your other podcasts Find the show notes and more information at thefutureofphotography.com. Hold up.